Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at some senator and governor approval ratings. We're also going to take a look at some of the partisan trends by the different demographics. So let's get right into it and start with the morning consult or morning consult poll. They recently put out their fourth quarter results for the most popular and least popular U.S. senators. And in this one, they do single out Bob Menendez from New Jersey. Now that his indictments have really set in, it's no surprise that it looks like he's in contention for least popular senator. So let's see what we've got for Menendez. Is approval with all voters is at only 25%, 59% disapprove. Back in the third quarter, he was still above water by four. This time, he lost a lot of support with his own party. Democrats went from a 68% approval all the way down to just 37. His disapproval has skyrocketed from 14 to 47. It's similar with independents, but much less dramatic. And with Republicans, there's not much movement there at all. They already hated this guy. His approval rating is still at 14%. His disapproval has gone up slightly from 68 to 74. So I do wonder about these 14% of Republicans that approved of Menendez prior to the indictments and after nothing has changed. And they also mentioned that among Hispanic voters in his state, Menendez's approval rating fell from 43 to 35, while his disapproval went from 34 to 46. So let's get into the top 10 most popular senators. In first place, it's the same as it was last quarter. We've got John Barrasso from Wyoming. He's at a very stellar 71% approval rating. Under that, the top Democrat is Brian Schatz in Hawaii at 67, then Bernie Sanders at 64. Angus King and Cynthia Loomis round out the top five. What about on the other side? Well, the least popular senator, it's again Mitch McConnell. He has a 66% disapproval rating. Now we've got Menendez and Susan Collins in Maine. Then it's Ron Johnson and Joe Manchin for the top five. It's pretty clear that McConnell and Menendez are far and away more despised than the rest. And if you're looking for the sample size in this poll, it says they use at least 323 registered voters in each state. So the margin of error is plus or minus five. It's technically kind of a big margin, and I know some people are not a fan of morning consult, but they do comprehensively poll all the senators and all the governors. So down here, they talk about cinema in Arizona. She's underwater with Democrats and Republicans. Independent voters are split. And Ted Cruz, who's also up for re-election this year, along with cinema, he's at a net 3% positive approval rating, 47 to 44. Now let's take a look at the state executives, the governor. Governors. This time they single out Kim Reynolds in Iowa. That's going to be because in the Republican primary for president, she did endorse Ron DeSantis instead of Donald Trump. So there's going to be some backlash there. If we go down here, we can see that her approval rating is at 49. Her disapproval is at 46. That's down from a year ago where she was at 55 positive, 39 negative. Her disapproval has gone up a little bit with Democrats, but with independents, it was positive a year ago. Now it's crossed into negative territory. Only 38 approve. Republicans, it's also dropped off 89 to 80 and the disapproval is up from 7 to 16 so let's see who the most popular governor is if you follow approval ratings whatsoever i don't think this is going to be a surprise at all it's phil scott in vermont and this guy is an absolute legend it seems like he can do no wrong he's at an 86 percent approval rating only 14 percent disapprove then we've got mark gordon in wyoming then chris sununu josh green and Kay ivy round out the top five so who are the bottom 10 well for that we could go down to mississippi and take a look at Tate Reeves. He's at 43 approved, 48 disapproved. Now, all these other ones on the bottom do have a net positive approval rating. Second from the bottom is Kim Reynolds. Then we've got Jay Inslee, Ron DeSantis, and Michelle Luann Grisham. Down here, they talk about Ron DeSantis, how his popularity has fallen. They compare that to Kim Reynolds among Republican voters that strongly approve. It is kind of an unforced error for Reynolds to endorse DeSantis when it looked like he didn't really have much of a chance in Iowa. Now she's got to rebuild her image. Meanwhile, Ron DeSantis DeSantis, who dropped out, he's still got a couple of years left to get back to his state and try to change voters' perception. And if we go down a little bit further, they break down the approval for Chris Sununu, and he's still at an impressive 65%. That's barely changed since a year ago. What has changed is his support with Democrats. That's gone from a 43% up to 49%. The disapproval has fallen from 55 to 45 Why did that happen? Well, that's because he came out and endorsed Nikki Haley in the GOP primary. That's the kind of thing that gets you points with the opposite party, but it's going hurt you with your own party. His approval with independents has narrowed up slightly, but with Republicans, it did clearly drop off 88 down to 79, while the disapproval went from 7 to 13. So those are the approval ratings. Feel free to look more through this if you'd like, but I'm going to keep it moving and take a look at some of the partisan trends among different demographics. For that, we're going to get on Gallup. And like with everything else, all the links will be down below in the description, and I'm going to try to move quickly, so feel free to pause it on anything you'd like. So the headline here is Democrats lose ground with Black and Hispanic adults. 
adults. That has been the concern for Democrats. If just a few percentage points of those voters decide to cross over and vote for Donald Trump or just decide to stay home, that's likely to be a significant problem for Biden. So let's get down to the table. This asks which party the different demographics identify with, including leaners. Overall, Democrats are at 43, Republicans 45. With the gender breakdown, men break for the Republicans big time, 52 to 37. With women, they go for the Democrats by a slightly less significant margin of 49 to 40. By age, 18 to 29 year olds break for the Democrats 47 to 39. 18 to 49 year olds are close to even, but they give the GOP a two point advantage 44 to 42. 50 to 64 year olds go even more to the GOP by a 10 point advantage and 65 and up go one point toward the Republicans 47 to 46. The race and ethnic breakdown has non-Hispanic white adults going 54 to 38 for the Republicans. Non-Hispanic black adults go hard for the Democrats 66 to 19 and Hispanic adults still lean toward the Democrats by 12, 47 to 35. With education, no college voters go toward the Republicans by 14. They also go to them with some college by nine points. Then it flips with college graduates. The Democrats have a five point advantage and postgraduate voters are where it goes off a cliff for the Democrats. It's a 29 point advantage, 60 to 31. They also have region, size of community, religion, and religious attendance. That's all good stuff, but I'm going to keep it moving. Down here, we've got the trend broken down by race or ethnicity. This is the advantage with the Democratic Party, and the top line is non-Hispanic black adults. It's overwhelming for the Democrats, except for the past five years or so, it looks like it has dropped off. Hispanic adults, it's the same thing. There's a clear decline over the past three to five years. With non-Hispanic white adults, it's pretty much stable. Let's look at the same trends by education. Again, postgraduate degree is very high for the Democrats, but it's pretty much on par where it was six or seven years ago. College graduate has started to slip toward the Republicans, and no college has gone from not really preferring either party six or seven years ago to decisively shifting toward the Republicans. So there's been some change amongst these groups over the past two to three decades, and it's hard to say which way it's going to go next time. But if you go by what happened last time, there are some concerns here for the Democrats. The next section shows the same thing by age breakdown. And again, over the past five or six years, the youngest voters, 18 to 29 and 30 to 49, they've slowly drifted more toward the right. If you want to just look at it between men and women, they both have shifted right by a couple of points over the past one or two years. It's not overly dramatic, but the broader trend shows another slow drift toward the right. So maybe this all means something, maybe it doesn't. We're nine months out from an election, but Gallup usually has a large sample size in their polls. I would say there's some things to be cautious about here for the Democrats, but we know what happened in the midterms. The Republicans underperformed. As I always say, that might happen next time, it might not, but you could easily spend some more time on here to look at more of the data. I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions, but that's a quick recap of the Senate and Governor governor approval ratings, as well as some of the partisan trends with key demographics. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about any of this? How's your senator or your governor doing? In which way are these different demographics going to trend? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.